Hello, my friend. Welcome to my channel. You maybe have done a lot of dashboard. You know, uh, some dashboard are easy to remove it, and some dashboard are like a challenge to remove it. If you have been working on a poster for a long time ago, uh, a repairing or reupholding to a, rush, a dashboard is not a big deal because uh, you have been done this trade for a long time ago. But if you are new on this trade, uh, repair a dashboard might be a challenge for you. This is a uh, 1957 uh, Chrysler New Yorker. If you don't have experience uh, reupholstering this kind of dashboard, on this video I will give you an idea how you can do it. There are three ways how you can do it. First, the first way is by removing the whole dashboard out of the car. You have to lower the steering wheel and that is time if you don't have experience, you might, might be stuck in that process. The second way how you can do it, and it's a way easier, is by removing the windshield. The customer has to pay for that. And I will show you another way how you can uh, reupholster this kind of dashboard. This is a New Yorker, like I, I, I said before. And I'm going to reupholster this dashboard without removing the dashboard and without removing the windshield. Uh, I will give you an idea how you can do it. This is just an idea. Okay, this is how this dashboard, it is right now. That is normal. Normal, it is all, and most of the time that's what it happened when the dashboard, when the car is all. I'm going to uh, replace those one. Going to put uh, some a little bit different going to remove that chrome and I'm going to remove all those molding and the mirror too. You will see the whole process. I'm going to remove that, the molding that is under there, plus the light, the chrome, everything, it has to be out. Everything. You see a molding is there, so in order to remove the molding, I have to remove the uh, stereo. Plus all those chrome, and you will need some uh, tool you will need definitely you will need a flashlight definitely a uh, phillips lom screwdriver if you have uh, this kind of ratchet that's awesome it will help you a lot plus this tool this is some of the tool you uh, that you might need it plus a socket uh sometimes it is 10 millimeters sometimes it is 9 932 and extension if it is a flexible like this one it is so much better and what else you will need it a uh, socket if you have this kind of elbow uh it's great to have this kind of tool that one i will add it to the Phillips screwdriver and it's easier using this tool it's so much easier but in case if you don't have those kind of tools, you have to use the normal tool. It will consume more time, but you don't have no option. So I start removing that light in there. It comes with two Phillips screw, and I have to disconnect that. And it's easy, just pull it, just be careful. And then I will start using the screw gun because it is so much easier and faster. Okay. There are some screw under there and I have to remove the stereo. It comes with two screws on the front. That's easy, those ones are visible, but it has two knots behind. To reach those knots, you will need a flashlight and it's kind of hard. I will add, I, I will make a, a extension and I will put a socket on one end, then on the other end I will put a, it's a 10, then on the other end I will put a, a ratchet. So we'll use this ratchet and I will try to show you where is that nut. It's hard to see because the position of uh, where it is located. But you can see that socket in there. I have to move it. And I got one right there. Now that, that nut comes with the uh, with the ball, but sometimes it just comes the nut. So I remove one, I show you how you can remove one, and I remove the other one. So uh, 
and here I have this part out. If you're going to disconnect some electrical cable, wire, just pay attention where those cable, uh, those wires are, are connected because you have to put everything back. So I got this one and you can see right there is one screw with the nut and there is the other one right there too. So I'm going to remove that uh, metal right there. That's uh, cover the speaker. It comes with four nuts. Just make sure to remove it. There is one and you can see it and it's easier. It's not necessary to remove the speaker in order to wrap this dashboard with vinyl. So I remove that metal and right here just be careful with that part if you're going to use it back. I am not going to use it. I'm going to put uh, another piece. It's a little bit different. And then when you've done that you have to remove all those screws that are holding the molding. If you don't have experience using a screw gun, just do everything manually. That's my best advice for you. Everything manually. So I got those screw in there. And then I take out the other screw. I didn't show you that part. It is not necessary. Uh, I just show you one side and I have it right here. So, so far so good, my friend. Now I have to remove this uh, metal. That metal has one uh, Phillip screw on the center. You have to put a small screwdriver, loose it a little bit. It's not necessary to take the whole screw out. Just loose it and then uh, remove that part. As you can see, the gear of this car were are located. So uh, just be careful. You have to remove a metal that is holding those gear and remove all the Phillip screws that are holding that part in there. Then when you're done with that one, you have to remove the chrome. Just be careful. You have to be patient. And then I got that chrome out. You see how simple it is. It's not a big deal. The thing is when you never dump something like this, you might get nervous. You will get confused. You might be able to uh, take uh, all those parts out. But sometimes when you're going to put it back, you don't know how. And I have to remove two more screw right here. This one. And that metal is out. So I remove all the molding and chrome that are holding part of the material. So now I am removing the material. And you can see how it is. It is touched. That is normal. That is normal. Don't get afraid. Don't get scared. That is normal. On the old car, it is normal. I am backing it because I don't want that thing to flow all inside the car. That's what I am backing it. Sometimes I use the blower, but on this uh, job I prefer using the vacuum. Vacuum everything, try to remove everything, cleaning really good, best what you can. I'm not going to show you the whole process, just make sure to uh, vacuum most what you can. When you done uh, vacuuming, you have to uh, sand it. So vacuum is not enough because you can see it still has some bump and dash right there. And you have to make that part as smooth as possible. Sand it best what you can. Spend some time in there. This process, it is so important to do it good. So important. If you don't sand it good and you put a phone on top, uh, those bands might be able to see, uh, see you through the phone. If you can see it through the phone, for sure you will be able to see it through the material. So make sure. I sand it. I cover the speaker. I will put a new speaker in there. I'm not going to show you how because that is a simple thing. And then I will I put in some paint in there. I don't have to uh, paint it perfectly, but I just put in some paint in there just to protect that metal. I already painted. I'm going to use this phone. This is a good phone. This is a closed cell phone. A lot of dashboard has that kind of phone. And you can see right there, it's an even that area. I'm going to put a 1A thickness phone just to make that part even. 
and I go in, I am using a glue gun and I put a glue in there and I spray glue. It is so much faster and easier for me. In case if you don't have a glue pot or glue gun, well, you don't have no choice. You have to apply glue uh, by using a brush. I used to do it when I don't have a glue gun. I use a brush and it's not a big deal. Yes, it is more time. That's all. So I am putting glue in there. I'm not gonna cho I didn't show you how you can put glue at all, but I give you an idea. And I am putting this phone in there. I have to uh, trim that phone. I cut that piece uh, bigger and I am cutting a little by little. So I already cut it, but you can see it's still a bump when the phone ends. So what is the best way right here? Well, I want the part uh, even. So I am using a sandpaper and I am sanding by hand. I have a tool to sand it, like power tool and a manually tool. But you can see I am doing by hand. Just pretending if you don't have a tool, you can do it by hand. It's not a big deal. And you can see it right there. It's even that part. Simple, huh? Simple. Now I'm going to cut a phone 20 by uh, 68. I got the phone right here. And I'm going to cut the vinyl same measurement. 20 by 68. On this kind of phone, if you're going to use this kind of phone, I recommend you to sand it. Sand it. Use a thirty. Uh, use a eighty uh, grip sandpaper. Sand it. And now I am going to put glue. I'm going to apply a lot of glue in there. And you can see. I am using the land down top and trim glue. That is a good glue. After I apply glue on the phone, I am applying glue, glue right here, the metal. And you can see I covered that area with paper and masking tape. So important because I am using a glue gun. And I don't want to spray glue on the windshield or on the metal. See? So now I'm going to put glue on the driver's side. And same thing. I'm going to make uh, this dashboard with, I'm going to wrap this dashboard with one piece of foam. Sometime when the dashboard has some, a bigger uh, uh, curve, I have to use two pieces of foam to get that shape. So I got the dashboard and the phone with glue. So now you have to uh, wrap it, the dashboard with phone. One eight thickness phone. Make sure no air bubble. If you see it between the metal and the phone and the phone have a wrinkle or, or have a bubble or air bubble, uh, make sure to get rid of that bubble because that bubble might see it through the upholstery material so uh it's going to get dark and i'm going to put some light in there that way you can see the whole process I start cutting the phone, following, following the shape of the dashboard. Right here, to the camera, uh, it's hard to see the shape on that corner, but it's not straight. 
it have a, like a curve. I am putting the molding back. You might ask why he's putting back. Well, because I has to uh, trim that phone around the molding. And I have to sand that phone too. So I am trimming, you can see it. I don't want that uh, molding on top of the phone. I want the molding to be on top of the vinyl, but not on top of the phone. So I already cut it, so I'm removing this molding. And it is out. Now I am taking the phone out, and you can see him right there. Now I am doing working on the front part. I am using a utility knife. And you can see you have to do that you have to uh you might say well the molding is on top of that phone and i prefer to leave it longer well remember the molding has to go exactly on top of that part i am cutting that hole and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side And I got the second uh, hole clean. So now I have to do this part. A big piece of metal will go on, on top of this. And I just need to clear the speaker uh, area. And that is how. Now I put this metal. You can see it is different like the one where I, I removed it a few minutes ago. The customer want this part in there. So now I'm going to cut the phone exactly around the metal. If you don't have experience doing this, just be careful. You don't want that knife to scratch that piece of metal. So I already uh, cut it. Now I have to remove the phone. So I already removed the phone and I put this uh, panel back and you can see it fit perfectly in there. Well, because this, this is a new piece of metal, I have to drill a hole. Because I'm going to put a four nice uh, screw in there. I drilled that two front hole without a problem. But on the front hole, it's kind of hard to drill. So I am using a cell tapping screw just to make the hole in there. Okay, I made the hole. So the four holes are done. This is the vinyl. It is a, a marine vinyl. It is this brand. If you have been working on a poster, you know that this vinyl is a good vinyl. It doesn't stretch like we want it stretch a little bit on two sides a little bit not that much i put a lot of glue on the vinyl and i'm going to do the same thing right here same thing you have to put a lot of glue And you can see me right there applying glue on that area. I already put glue and I go I I going to let it dry for four minutes. That is the part with glue. So after I let it dry for four minutes, you see the, the dashboard have a mark, the material have a mark. Make sure to put that mark on top of the other mark. Make sure, make sure the material is equal on four sides. Don't cut the material exactly. I give on this material six inch extra.
and you can see it. I am playing with that, making sure it's positioned right. Then I start on that corner. If it, this vinyl is stretch, that would be easier. But this vinyl it doesn't stretch like I want it. It's a T.O. I show you that brand. This is a marine vinyl. I secure that area, then I start playing a little by little by little. I'm going to use that hot air just to force that vinyl to stretch a little bit. So I got that part and you can see it. Now I am working on the passenger side. The passenger side is not a big deal. Uh, because it's plain, except the corner. I'm going to use the hot air at the end. And I'm still rubbing with the palm of my hand. It's getting dark. I will run a light. That way you can see it better. I have to cut it right here on the corner uh, to make the vinyl easy to mold it, forcing that vinyl. All the way would be hard to mold it. A lot of people put a stitch in there, but believe me, on this kind of dashboard, if you put a stitch, uh, you kill the original uh, design because originally it doesn't have a stitch. Original. So uh, I almost finished the, the passenger side, but I jumped to this area. Just be patient on this part, my friend. Be patient. One little mistake right here, one uh, bubble, one uh, wrinkle, you have to unglue it. You have to take them apart and redo it. And you don't want that to happen. Because if you are wasting time, you are wasting money. I put a hot air. Put the heat gun in there. It's forcing the vinyl a little by little. It is so important to make a rice, make it want. Then, because the material have an excess material in there. I start uh, cutting a little by little, a little by little. I put a hot air, hot air, then I pull the vinyl, then I cut it. The hardest part is some is that have been done already, but right here you might say, well, the customer, this part it is under, he can see it. But if the customer or whoever is behind the steering wheel not able to see that part, please, please spend some time and do it right. Because the job will talk for your business, will talk for you. So uh, eliminate any wrinkle on there, any bump. And you can see that part, it is looking great in there. Even it is under there, you can see it. The customer is not going to be under there uh, looking for any mistake. No, it's in your conscience. It's almost done. Restart. I can see the material has like a some mark in there. I will put a hot air at the end, just making sure to make it smoothest, to make it nice. I am trimming the vinyl because it's too long. And you have to do the same thing.
this uh, dashboard will so much easier if he, uh, the customer removed the windshield. So much easier. I have to cut it right here. And I'm cutting around the hole. Do not cut it too short. If you cut it too short or when you put the piece of metal on top, you might be able to see that. Cut it longer and then go a little by little, trimming until you get that. So I got the first holes. And I'm going to keep cutting on here a little by little. And I do the same thing right here. I am using a, a racing blaze and I cut them on there. Okay, I will put the piece of metal just making sure it fit on there. It should fit. I replaced the speaker, I didn't show you. Um, it's easier. And I put a piece of uh, material on top because that metal have a, like a, some hole and I don't want the customer to see through that because that speaker is a, like a chrome speaker and I don't want to see that part through the hole of the metal. So I am putting those molding, just be careful that dashboard is, is done and you don't want to make some mark or make some cut. You don't want that to happen. Putting that mirror in there. And then using the screw gun. If you don't have experience using the screw gun, just be careful. Uh, just uh, do it by hand. Do it by hand. Now I put this metal. And there is. There is. So I start putting those screw by hand. Any mistake right here, you might be ending the whole dashboard redoing it so yes be careful see by hand tighten those screw by hand and I got it and I put this one there that's what the customer wants if you are not happy because I am adding those things that's what he want those things I was happy with that way uh, the car come, but I say at the end he want to replace those things. So now I am putting this molding. And remember I remove a, a light in there with the crumb, so I, I'm making a hole to put that light in there. It just comes with two screws. So I got that part. And I am finished the molding with two screw. Okay, now it is time to put the scrum back. Do you remember how you take them out? Well, you have to put it back the same way. Uh, four screw are holding that part, and I start putting by hand a little tiny screws. And I got it. So now it is time to put this one inside that hole. So I just put the screw a little bit because this crumb is gonna be under there. And now I can tie. So that part is tight. And now we're going to uh, look for the hole on here. And there is the hole. Now we're going to put the screw in there. So I put the other side of the crumb. I didn't show you how because some of the same thing. Now it is time to put this metal in there. The customer, will, he will remove this part back 
and the molding that are holding the material on the front because he said he's going to paint it. He said, put everything back, I will take it to a special place where they going to paint it. Going to paint all those molding. So I am putting everything exactly like he said. So everything is done except this part. Do you remember? I, I removed this part. I disconnect some wire. So I have to connect those wire back. Everything like how it was. I forgot to mention you before at uh, the beginning. Always, always check that everything is working. If it uh, still is working, turn on the car and see if it is working. Because sometimes the customer says it's working and you have to make sure that it's working. So in this one, I'm going to put the two screw, Phillips screw on the front, and the two nuts that are holding. I didn't show you that part, but you see me removing those screw and those ball. It's going to be the same thing. Uh, and that is, it is done. I am putting the hot air, like I say, just making sure uh, that part look nice, because I saw some mark and I didn't like it. so with the hot air, you are able to remove a mark and you can see him on there. It look nice. I like how it look. It is time, my friend. It will take time. And look it. You can see him on that day. Perfectly, huh? You might be dumb some dashboard, but not like this one. And you might ask, do I have to remove the glass? Do I have to remove the whole dashboard out of the car? No. I show you how. That's how it was. I clean it. And I paint it. And I, I will say, the hardest part of this job is uh, cleaning, prepare everything to put the material. That will be the hardest part. Putting the vinyl, just make sure to cut it with extra, uh, three inch all around extra. Three inch all around extra. Never cut them exactly. Never. It's too hard. This vinyl, it doesn't stretch like I want it. Stretch just a little bit, a little bit. You have to use that hot air, force it to stretch it. You see me doing the whole process, my friend. If you think that this is hard, no. There are some other dashboards that are harder than this, especially on an old car. Uh, you have to remove the whole uh, thing out of the car and make it on the table. Uh, there is no choice. On this one, we have a choice, make it uh, inside the car. And this one, it doesn't require a stitch, like the way I made it, like the way it was original. Some other one, uh, if you are using leather, you have to put a stitch. You have to remove it and trace it outside. Or you have to come with the leather and trace it inside the car. So thank you, my friend. I hope you enjoyed this video. For those who have been working on long time and car interior, maybe you uh, don't like it, like the way I made it. But I know there are some people who are learning and they are having a hard time trying to figure out how to uh, wrap it, uh, something like this, uh, similar with vinyl. Um, like I said at the beginning, there are uh, three different ways how you can make it. I show you one. Thank you for watching this video. Oh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, feel free to hit that button and click the bell. Thank you. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.